What do you go on then? What are you going to ask me? Whenever recording. Oh, we're recording. Oh, we're recording. We're recording. Yeah, we're recording. recording. Right. Modernism is uh, associated um, with the rise of, of capitalism and rational rational thinking. It's uh, something that happened in the West, in this country in particular, and and Europe, in terms of a different way of looking at the world. It can be summed up with one of the original philosophical terms, I think, therefore I am. And that um, phrase meant, I will only believe what I can see and what I can prove. Now, once you start thinking about the world in that way, you start to ignore other things like spiritual aspects, um, like all the, the goblins that would have existed before then. And in this culture, and in this, in this country, and in parts of Europe, there was a movement away from the magical and the mystical into the factual and things you could prove. But it's also um, the kind of secularization of art practice. So instead of people painting religious painting um, on commissions from the church or on commissions for private individuals to put a painting into a chapel, say, people increasingly get involved in painting secular subject matter. So 17th century Dutch painters start painting bowls of fruit. Um, in the 18th century, people start painting landscapes. But then in art movements, things like modernist painting, abstract expressionism. Um, in literature, people like uh, James Joyce, experimenting with form, challenging convention. And that's a key thing. It's the idea of avant-garde, small groups of people out there at the forefront of things, challenging the established way of doing things. I suppose Marcel Duchamp is a key figure in that. You come across Duchamp, painter. Because it's unclear whether Duchamp's a modernist or a postmodernist, and in a way he's both. Um, and there's a whole series of figures like that. And around this time, you have, of course, the Industrial Revolution, you had changes in technology, you had the discoveries of the world, you had mapping, organization, history was put in its place, and everything was institutionalized. Now, on that basis of a rational thought, came an idea about how society was and how society operated. And modernism was a way of looking at the world. We are going to progress. We are going to rely on facts and things we can prove. Modernism can be seen as the belief in progress. Through science, through research, through discovery, we're going to find out a better way of living. And that is a summary of modernism. The first signs of the movement evolved in the mid-60s, as an example with the work of Sigmar Polk when he first exhibited in Dusseldorf, Germany in 1963 under the term Capital Realism. During the recession hit 1970s, Charles Harrison wrote that the, cultural of the culture of painting, it seemed, could now be critically addressed by painting. And he was saying that after the end of painting in the 1960s, Painting had come to had come second to itself in in wake of the individualist perception and disregard of historically conscious rule abiding. We can only understand postmodernism if we understand modernism. Postmodernism as the rejection of it. Um, postmodernism, then, you can see it in a number of ways. Postmodernism can be understood as the collapse of modernism. It's like carrying on with some of the same projects in the same spaces, but with a loss of faith in the idea that the challenge can happen. Because the idea, perhaps I missed out around modernism, one of the key ideas or key principles of modernism is, is the notion of, of the twin notions of enlightenment and emancipation. Knowing something makes you free. It suggests that this idea behind that was in modernism, that things were fixed, that things made sense, that rational thought mattered, all those ideas, which were always only ideas, and you could argue false ideas, those ideas society began to reject. Is there more to life than that which we can just prove? And one thing you can put it down to is trust a people, a culture that started to question the ideas that were being given to it, particularly by authority. Why was there a rejection of the ideas of science and the ideas of government who were saying this is the way and this is the structure? Well, some people put it down to two world wars. But because of Auschwitz, because of the bomb, people lost faith in rationality and science.
When authorities have taken us into two world wars and generations have died, understandably a society starts to think, well, is, is, do, do we trust these people? Other people put it down to science because modernism was partly based on science, rational thought and proof. Science was supposed to make things better. We weren't going to get ill. We were going to have jetpacks and live on Mars. Instead, it had the nuclear bomb, and the nuclear bomb suggests uh, could have killed us all. Political ideologies seem to be dead because we're just much more sensible, much more pragmatic, and we're more interested in whether it's Tesco's and Sainsbury's than whether we're conservative or late. That's postmodernism. Now, once you reject those systems, you're left with a, a society that says, "What do we believe?" A culture that isn't fixed. And so without that, we left, and, and John Baudrillard sums it up best, we are swimming in a sea of science. And everything seems to be about choice now. What food are you going to have? Our culture doesn't say, you must eat this, you must eat that. Modern culture would have done. Postmodern says, have what you like. In the modern times, if you did something that was antisocial, you'd have found yourself stoned or rejected at the very least. In postmodern times, everyone says, okay, it's fine, because there's nothing fixed. There's no fixed moral code. There are many moral codes up. Duchamp's painted our mutt on the side of a urinal, turned it upside down and called it a fountain. What is left to challenge? There's, there's nothing anybody can say in the field of art that's more challenging than that. And, you know, and he did that, well, it's pushing 100 years ago. So after that, what challenges there left? So one is a kind of exhaustion. So people like Fred Jameson talk about that exhaustion of the narrative of modernism. That's what postmodernism is. So it's nothing radically different. It's just we've all got tired of trying to be new. There is no progress. We do not believe we're going anywhere. Instead, we're searching in many ways. That's why music constantly rehashes the old, fashion rehashes the old, and everything's retro. I think the last thing I would say about postmodernity is it's, it's the collapse of those big stories, the big narratives of progress in favour of a empty, stupid, vacuous one that allegedly we all live by now. Postmodernism, it is very important to note, is a theory. It's not a fact, necessarily. Just because I believe it and others believe it doesn't make it true. It's a theory that grew in the 60s, 70s out of French philosophy, Audriard, Lyotard, for example. I, you know, I think, the, uh, just as you just referred to, I think the best way of sort of giving you a sort of postmodern answer would be to say, I don't know. And that's postmodernism. Photographers who took part in this new wave of stylistics and thinking could be well demonstrated by the work of American artist Cindy Sherman. Since the 70s, Sherman has been widely written about for her series entitled Film Stills and its early realisation of postmodernist approach. The series focuses on a collection of self-portraits of the artist in various female film roles, generic of the 1950s and 60s, and it was for the easily recognisable coding of narrative portrayed in the imagery that suggested femininity was not a natural instinct to women, but a cultural code constructed in the media and the moulding of society by consumerism, the government and art. Sherman illustrated this point with her series Opening People's Minds to Ideas Post That of Modernism. Um, a lot of people could get overwhelmed and confused over the prospect of trying to understand such a complex and broad topic such as postmodernism. Um, the beauty of the movement was that it was a way of describing a shift in art which represents the complex and the inexplicable, a way of thinking that followed on from modern society took cultural and technological advances further through thought than they had already come in practice. And most mod uh, a postmodernist painter asked questions rather than followed doctrines. They had a light-hearted, playful approach over conforming to the serious, orthodox styles of its forefather, modernism. They would mix layers, experiment with canvas surfaces, and reference mass media in rejection of the highbrow.